Let's pray. First, Father, we are most thankful for this day. We thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us all to assemble here today to take care of the business of the school district. We ask you, Lord, and we invite you in to be a part of this meeting, dear Lord, that everything be done decent and in order in your eyesight. Lord, we ask continue to bless for all of our school district and everyone that's here in this room. For all these things we ask in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen. 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 Please stand for the pledge of the flag. Attention, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time we need to adopt the agenda and we have one change. Um, 4.1.1 should read discussion of grades, GPA, QPA, uh, Mississippi Code annotated. We need to add and FERPA on 4.1.1. Okay, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I make that motion. I second. Okay. All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? Three presentations, request to address the board. Mr. Compton. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning. This is a special call of board meeting, um, which means, as that term in, suggests, it's not a regular meeting. We normally meet on the second Monday of each, eve, uh, of each month. And so, uh, this is not the second Monday, and we're here at the request of parents that have asked the, for the opportunity to come before the board. It's the board's intent to give you an opportunity to uh, bring your concerns before the board, but we have to follow our policy and our procedures and applicable law that applies. And what I want to bring your attention is to what's called FERPA, or the Federal Educational Rights to Privacy Act. So, any discussion this morning cannot mention specific students by name. That they, they, the student, not the parent, the student, are entitled to protection of their private educational records. So, if anybody starts mentioning a student's name by name, you're going to be asked to leave, and they'll be shut down at that point. Uh, that's by law. That's not something that's discretionary with us. That's for the protection of the, of the student. So if you've got specific concerns that you want to address, what I suggest that you do is to give hypothetical situations. Assume student A under these circumstances and how it affects student A with that compared to student B. There's nothing wrong with talking in hypothetical terms, but you don't need to name specific students <coughs> by name. Is that understood by the people that have requested an opportunity to come for the school board. <coughs> the other thing is that we want to maintain proper order during the process of this morning's special called meeting. So only the individuals that have requested an opportunity to come before the board will be given an opportunity to speak to the board. No comments from the audience, no questions from the audience. If you wanted an opportunity to speak to the board, there's a process for it. And it's a written request to be made. So we've got nine individuals that have asked to specifically come before the board. What I would ask for you, each of you to consider is, each one of these board members have walking around sense. So they don't need to see, hear the same situation repeated nine different times. They can understand that from the first person that presents it. So if, if your concern has already been addressed, even though you've asked for the opportunity to speak to the board, unless it's something in addition to that, I ask that you honor the board member's time. Because they, they, they're here at your request. They've taken away their time from their personal lives, their businesses, to come here and give you this opportunity. Uh, the other thing is that each member that has requested uh, to, to speak will be given five minutes to present your matter. If the board members have questions of you, that will not count against your time if they want to ask you for clarification on that. But you'll be limited to five minutes. 
if each one of you uses up that five minutes, that's 45 minutes alone just in this presentation, okay? Uh, so with that being said, I'll be the moderator or the official timekeeper. I'll try to keep records of that. This is an open meeting. Uh, if you want to record it, if you want to video it, that's all fine and good. As far as the media is concerned, we have a policy uh, that addresses media. And you're required to uh, ask permission, written permission, before the meeting starts to the superintendent. That's what our board policy says. Uh, we've got unofficial media, I think, present this morning. As long as you're not interrupting the process, not moving around, and are stationary, I don't think that will present a problem. Uh, other members in the audience, if you've got cameras, again, if you can do that, if you want to video, if you want to record it, that's up to you. But it cannot be disruptive of this process. I think that with that being said, uh, the first uh, individual that has requested an opportunity to speak uh, to the board is Cheyenne Deer. Is Ms. Deer here? Okay. Ms. Deer, it, you know, we're, we're limited in, in, in what we have. We don't have a podium or whatever. Whatever is comfortable for you, if you want to stand, if you want to see, sit, if, you know, that's entirely up to you. I ask that you try to project your voice loud enough so that the board members can hear. When I mean, giving these instructions or suggestions to Ms. Deer, this will apply to each individual that wants to come before the board. Uh, I ask that you be, res be respective so that if you've got questions or statements and the board may have questions to you, try not to talk over each other. In other words, the board's going to give you a, a complete opportunity to make your statement, but if a board member has a question or if there's some discussion, we can't hear if both of you are talking at the same time. So the board members will be respective of you. I ask that y'all be respective of the board members. Ms. Deere, you, you, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, the complaint I have is um, on the calculation part. When we had our meeting with Ms. Shaw, we were, if you had a nine weeks course, if you had an eight in a nine weeks course, they didn't give you the four points, they only gave you two points. Nowhere, nowhere in the handbook does it say if you take a nine weeks course, you get two points versus your four points. A two point, two points converts to a C. Okay, so when you calculated all that up, they divided by the amount of classes you took instead of the credits you received. And when you divided by the amount, he took 11 classes. He only got nine credits. So when you divided that by your 11 credits, it brought your QPA points down tremendously instead of divided by the amount of credits that you actually received for taking those classes because a, a nine weeks course um, it's just a nine-week course. You got to take two of them to get the whole four points according to how they are calculating out. But it's not in the handbook like that. Uh, a correlates to a 4.0 unless it's weighted. It's a 4.5 if it's an honors course or something like that. AP and dual credit is a 5.0. But they only gave you two points for that. Nowhere says if you take a semester course or a nine-week course, you only get half the um, QPA points. So by calculating like that, it brought everybody QPA points down. QPA is supposed to be higher than your GPA, and now they're way lower than the GPA. So that's the main um, concern I have about the calculation of it. And you brought up some good good points, and what I want everybody to understand is that uh, by state law, the board adopts policies that determine how grade point averages and cumulative point averages are to be determined. Mm -hmm. Equipment School District's policy says that will be determined by the handbook. Mm -hmm. And so the handbook is it's not a specific policy that addresses any of these issues that you mm -hmm. are talking about. It's specifically in the handbook. So I just it's want not to really like that. Well, in the handbook, it's not really like that. Well, it, it, the handbook talks about how it's to be handled. The handbook might not be clear on how it's to be handled, but the handbook does address these issues, some of these issues, not some the specific not issues. Any, anything else you'd like from no. okay. Board members have any questions of Ms. Deere? 
only two and a half minutes, Miss Deer. Are you sure that's all? Okay, thank you. Next uh, uh, Erica, Erica Means. Nine years I've worked for Quitman School District, or the 13 my children have attended, I have never come to you, and that alone should speak volumes. I'm asking for something quite simple today. I'm asking for you to decide to do the right thing by the children, so let me tell you a story. Suppose police stopped a speeder in front of the high school going 70 miles per hour. Would you be concerned? Most certainly, because the safety of children would be threatened. What if the speeder thought he should not get a ticket? You would quickly point out that the speed limit is posted in plain sight. That is when he presents a driver's license manual with a typographical error, stating 70 miles per hour is the lawful speed limit. Surely you would not stand by the book for legal reasons. You would have a moral and ethical obligation to change that book immediately so those near the school would remain safe via enforcement of the correct speed limit. Today you're faced with a comparable situation. Due to an error in the Boyd Policy Handbook and the Student Handbook, the calculation for quality point average is incorrect. The correct sign is posted in plain sight. It is mathematically impossible for QPA to be lower than grade point average. You cannot take a typographical error and call it a formula for something that has already been defined and established in the educational world as quality points divided by credit average. We are educators that went into this field to help children, and this is hurting them. Forget the parents, and let us look at examples of what we're doing to these kids. Here is four classes. Child A took two half credits, two whole credits, three A's, one B, 11 total quality points. Divided by the three credits they earned, that child has a QPA of 3.67. That represents an AB student. The handbook way divides it by four classes. QPA is 2.75. That represents a C and B student. Which one's more accurate of the student's grades? Should this student receive high honor recognition? If QSD goes by their incorrect formula, this AB student receives no honors at all. Quitman will forever be labeling this child as a C and B student. What is right and the just thing to do for this child? While the physical safety of children may not be in danger, the emotional safety of the students is being ignored because a few are clinging to the legality of an incorrect handbook instead of doing what's right for these students. These students have spent 13 years in school working to achieve their GPA and QPA, only to have class rank, high honors, and honors taken from them by a legal counsel that says ignore the obvious sign and hold firm to the misprint, even if it's disheartening, degrading, and costly in emotion and scholarship dollars. Here's your own strategic plan. Vision statement, empowering excellence. The mission of QSD is to empower our students to graduate as a productive, competitive citizens in global society. Goal one, increase achievement for all students. Goal two, provide safe, healthy, and orderly learning environment. Goal three, engage in open, honest, and responsive communication to build positive relationships for all stakeholders. How does what is happening with the QPA system measure up against these goals? It fails all three. It does not increase achievement by lowering QPA so the students cannot be recognized with honors they deserve. It has not provided safe, healthy, and orderly learning environment for the past month, and it will not improve the rest of the semester. Open, honest, and responsive communication has been replaced with bullying and tears. Our school district stands at risk of being branded as an insensitive, uncaring entity bent on protecting an errant handbook at the cost of student life scholarships, positive promotions, and a proud community. As you consider your vote in this matter, ask yourself, am I doing what's best for the students at Quitman High School? Am I doing what's best for my community? 
Can I, in all good faith, look at those students and citizens in the eyes today's and years to come and tell them I did the right thing? Choose the students. Choose your community. Do the right thing as leaders. Come out from behind the mask of legality that protects an errant handbook. Let yourself be remembered for passing one of the biggest tests of your life. As always, as educators, we should put kids first. As the kids say, this math isn't math. Thank you for listening. Questions? I have one. Okay. Was this the first year that the handbook had been misprinted in your opinion? It is not. I know I seen one in 2015 that it was misprinted from then on. I haven't seen before. And I do know we did not go by it in the past. I know for a fact the last two years we went by GPA. I could not find out before then. So it's been misprinted for a oh, number of years? That, since 2015. All right, I have a question. You said since 2000, or whichever years, then mm -hmm. what went by GPA? Um, how they calculated the kids' stuff. Y'all should be able to find that out. Because, because I, I thought GPA had been used. No, ma'am. Not in 2020? Not in the last two years. So, 21, right, just 21, 22, yes. it was done by GPA? Yes, ma'am. But I don't know before then. I couldn't get anybody to tell me. Thank you. Good job. Well, Mark. Oh. I was coming today to. She took a lot of steam out of a lot of sales. <laughs> I think the overall thing is do the right thing. Forget the law. Plus one more lawsuit. Y'all got tons of them anyway. Um, it, secondly, uh, make the parents sign. If you want an immediate change to do the right for me, have parents sign I do or I don't. See what adds up. Uh, I guess me and my audit background, I know I'm a little biased with being a parent here, but I think at the end of the day, those students over there can tell you who they think Sidney Myrick is. And I know I said that, I'm sorry, but that's my daughter. Oh, here's the deal. As an auditor, would you want me to base my audit on your financial statements on flawed data and incorrect formulas. Would you really have wanted me to give you an opinion on that? You looked at me and said, no, I don't care what our policy is, change it immediately. Do it by the right standards. The handbook calculation is totally erroneous. There is no educator will tell you that that is an accurate formula. Secondly, you didn't even calculate it correct because two nine weeks courses to add it together should equal four quality points. Ms. Shaw, as a math teacher, will tell you that in math there are such things as fractions, common sense. So the formula to get the quality points on two nine weeks courses should be the exact same as the formula to get one of a semester class. In effect, an A student makes a C. A C student makes an F. What does an F student make by that? A negative two. Does that make sense to you? Oh, secondly, I'm asking the board, just do the right thing. Change the formula. But more importantly, we need to realize these kids don't deserve what they got. No. You cannot put a child on that stage today without the majority of the people in that stadium distrusting that they're the true valedictorian or the salutatorian. I was going to recommend that y'all bring an outside person in. But now 
parents can't even see their kids' transcripts no more. They can only see the current semester. I am now calling on the board for the 2023 year to do away, totally do away with the honors of valedictorian and salutatorian. There's no, that, there's no respect left in those two honors. And my daughter was chosen as one of them one time. I'm telling take it away because nobody respects it anyway. Plus what the kid that does go up on the stage may encounter by the people in the crowd, which y'all may also experience. So just do away with it. Go back to the GPA and give everybody, based on the GPA, honors and high honors, based on their GPA. And forget those two awards. They're, they've been trashed this year. Period. Three calculations, six different people holding those positions. People are laughing at us, folks. All over the state of Mississippi and Alabama. And that's the sum of it. People are laughing at us. We've got a worse reputation today than we did last, last December. And the last thing I will say, student A, under your old system, had a 4.2. Under the mathematically correct formula, student A has a 4.29 not a 3.73. Mathematically impossible. Especially with all the college courses. That ain't just mine. I want to foster. Good morning. We've heard a lot of information here today. Um, I did not repeat. I think a good bit has been covered. But there's one thing that I don't think has been, and that's the mental status of the children. We've had to deal with so much stress and depression, the children not wanting to attend school. And we hear repeatedly, what's the point of even going? What's the point of even trying when it just gets taken away and we get treated the way that we're being treated. Ms. Shaw said to me, she said that, and, she, and I told her, I said, you seem to be a woman of integrity. She said that she could sleep at night being that she knew that she had done the right thing. Later on, that troubled me because as a parent, I couldn't sleep at night and my children couldn't sleep at night because they felt that they had done all that they could do in moving forward and to graduate with honors high honors and to have that snatched away from them. Our children are taught that your choices have consequences, but this seems to just be pushed under the rug. It seems that I can make an error because I'm bigger than you and because I'm in this position and there will be nothing done. We as parents, we're not okay with that. And whatever you decide today here in this boardroom, we are prepared. We are prepared to take it further because this has got to stop. We should do, we should do the work. We should, those positions that you're in, you have a responsibility to make sure that we take care of these children. There was one child who couldn't even drive home. Her mom had to tell her to stay right there because she was scared that she would lose another child in a car accident as she had lost her son. My child came and couldn't go to school for a day or two. There are other parents here who their children couldn't go to school didn't want to face they dealt with embarrassment, shame, and then the ones that they trust the most, the faculty and staff of Quitman School District, they didn't even want to look at them. So what does that say about us? And as Mr. Myrick said, we are the laughing stock right now. People are laughing at us. And it is shameful and embarrassing to have our children go through this. And not just our children, but to have our administrative staff look the way that they look. Me personally, I agree with the parents and what they've said, but I just think that we've got to do better. And I think that we should do what's right. And if not, then maybe we should 
Do something else. Do members have any questions of Ms. Foster? Thank you, Ms. Foster. Katrina Roberts. Good morning, everyone. My concern that I have this morning has already been addressed earlier. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes, Thank you for your concern for your student and for the Quinton students. Sean James. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. Um, a lot of my concerns have already been addressed. The only other thing is all the kids that are in these classes that have been in these spots up in the high honors and low honors, it don't matter where they are, if they're number one or they're number 10, number 20, you know. I've heard parents say to me on the street, well, my child, we got up to number 10 and we were happy, or number eight, you know, number even number 20. You know, they got happy, but now they're back down at 30 or 38, 48, whatever it is, you know. And, I mean, that hurts me just to know it because, I mean, I might, my child went up, come down, and then come down again on based on the figuring being wrong. Um, the handbook, if it's wrong, the biggest thing I have a problem with is they're dividing it by the total number of classes that a child take, has taken at the school. Versus, if the classes were only nine week classes, then you get half credit or full credit. But you're not adding them together to get a divider, you know. So the more classes a child takes, the less they get recognized for it. Uh, I mean, my daughter, we went ahead and talked to school, college. She actually is going to start somewhere around May the 8th on her college classes. I know she got whatever she's going to get academically at that college. But therefore, I mean, even the other ones that are going to be able to be up in a line, I don't know if any other child that will be out there in line will even know where they actually fell at. You know, uh, you're going to have disheartened folks, disheartened kids and parents from all the way up throughout. Is there a way to fix that? I don't know. I mean, are, you know, do you have time to fix that? I don't know that either. I mean, I've heard kids, I've heard parents say we don't want to do a graduation, we don't even want to walk across the field. You know, I've heard that. That, that hurts me. Uh, I mean, I actually told my child don't walk. I'll just be honest with you. And she's in the top. But, uh. I mean, as long as she gets a diploma, that's all I care about at this point. Because it, it's done got to where it's just embarrassment to the whole school district and all, you know. But I do, I do appreciate all y'all's time and everything else, you know, and everything. And I even appreciate the school system for giving my daughter the classes that she got to get her in life where she's going to be. I appreciate all the teachers and everybody that got her there. But I just feel like we failed them on this final result. Anything else, sir? I think that's all I'm going to say. Board members have any questions of Mr. James? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Joyce Simpson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Joy, J-O-I Simpson, and I have four things that I'd like to go over. The first being, um, athletics and band that was in the hand well not in the handbook that these would not be counted after the second time taking them and this was corrected on the last transcript because prior to that they were counted as zeros as far as QP points this was corrected on the third uh, QP accumulation calculation so how is that change possible without pro proper protocol because it's nowhere in the handbook and we talked about that but it was changed on this third uh, calculation. So that's to, one question. To, to the good or to the bad? Well, prior to that, I had requested a um, personal transcript for outside scholarship. So it was marked as a zero as far as quality points. But it was calculated in as four points for the GPA. 
bottom line result after all the recalculations, how was it handled? It was handled by adding to the quality points. So, so it was addressed on the final. Right. So this change, what I'm getting at, this change was made without proper protocol and without anything in the handbook. So how is that possible that that can be done off of hearsay and not in the handbook in black and white? Because we were always told that after you take a band or athletic activity twice, that it would not have any credit as far as quality points. But I could never find it. And I went back to handbook 2017, 18, and it was never found in any of those. So that's why I'm asking, how is that protocol or going by handbook if it's not printed anywhere? But it, the change was made on this third calculation. To the good. I, that could be to the good for some and to the bad for others. For, for your student, it was to the good. No, sir. It wasn't? No. Um, next point is um, the calculations for QPA in 2020 and 21, and also 21 and 22. They were on a decimal point schedule. Um, that meaning for A, if you got like a 98, it may be a 3.5, 3.6. That was also changed and not amended. I didn't see any amendments um, as far as that on the third calculation of QPAs. And that's on page 33 in the handbook of 2020-21. And also in 21-22. So how is that also possible without an amendment to the actual handbook? That change was made on the third calculation. Next point is kind of going off of Mrs. Deer, the quality points where you do the nine weeks course as a .5 and the semesters as a whole semester, that is outdated and hadn't been amended since we were on the block scheduling. So that's outdated. How is that not updated since we went on block scheduling? Last point, and I'm not going to hold y'all much longer, um, there was still a consistency on my son's transcript on the <coughs> third calculation, and he had a 0, 0.0 on one of those athletic courses, which Ms. Shaw did write it in but there's still miscalculations there. So <coughs> it's still being miscalculated on that final transcript. And like I said, I had my, my previous transcript for outside scholarships that I requested way before we even did the first calculation. And it's totally different. Totally different. Anything else? That's it. Board members have any questions of Ms. Simpson? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Angela Arrington? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my concern, uh, I already been answered too, but the only thing I had to say, like the gentleman said earlier about the, the kids that's hurt, for instance, uh, my daughter, I think her thing was changed by three times too, but at first, when all of it went on, my baby was like, when mama don't worry about it, it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. But the third time when they changed it, that's when she called me and said, mama, could you go to the school and talk to them? Because her stuff was dropping lower and lower. And I'm speaking just of my baby, and I know everybody else's baby. All these children that worked hard. I know mine's that worked really hard in the stuff she'd have been through. And it, it's hurting the kids. And like he said, someone went... I don't really want to graduate as long as they get their diploma. Some of the children are saying that now. And that's the only concern I have. So, like everybody said, whatever it is, just do right. And like the other gentleman was saying about cutting the other stuff out and just do the high honor and the whatever for the kids, I'm with that too. But it, it hurt them kids. And I know it hurt some of the parents too. Thank you, Ms. Harry. Do board members have any questions? Nikisha Watts. <coughs> Nikisha Watts. <coughs> Not hearing a response, then that would be all of the individuals that have asked to come before the school board to address this issue. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to this board president, Ms. Waltman. Uh, any closing comments? 
regarding this matter before we move on to executive session. Okay, thank you all for coming today, and we will now determine the need for executive session. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? Make a motion that we go into closed session to become the need for executive session. I have a second. Second. All in favor? If y'all would excuse yourselves, the board's going to consider the remaining of these sessions to consider these issues. Maybe the school do something about it, you know? What's your full name? Sean James. Sean James. I'm just a concerned parent for my daughter and all kids, really. I just want them all to be the... I want them all to get the place that they deserve. They come back, say they had a verdict, but they won't release it till later on. So the, the initial concern was that we were looking at maybe one student was the reason why this was being done, but you're more concerned just about all of them. I'm more concerned about all Everybody of them because the right place, not just one. that's right, because there's some of them that missed honors and high honors sure, sure. because of what the outcome was, you know. Sure. Uh, what uh, what was the statement after the meeting? They said it, uh, it would be determined that, or translated through the school district and that they would get it out to everybody. So they didn't ask you to come back in and give y'all a... Said there was, nobody could come back in, it was over with, and it would come out whenever it all got worded right. And they were going to send that out through the school district? Through the school now district everybody page. Everybody one time? Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to add? You Not at satisfied this time. with that? We'll see what the outcome is. Yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. 